Welcome to my channel Dazzling Stepping Stone. I am Bharat Srija. Today we are going to discuss about biological amplifiers. Let's see about differential amplifier in ECG recording, impedance matching circuit, instrumentation amplifier and right leg driven ECG amplifier. First we should know what is the importance of bio amplifier. So if you are measuring any bioelectric signal, it will have low amplitude and low frequency. So there is a necessity to boost up the signal strength. So we have to use bio amplifier. The output from these amplifiers are used for further process. For example, we may analyze ECG signal or EMG or EEG or any other bioelectric waveform. So to increase the signal strength, we should use the bio amplifier. So such an amplifier is called as biomedical amplifiers. So frequency is playing an important thing in amplifier. Also amplitude also the important parameter. So when I am thinking about frequency, I will ask a small question to you. For example, if any natural disaster is going to come, before we find, who will find that natural disaster? Example, you can take earthquake. Can you answer for it? Of course, it is analyzed by animal. So the first, the predictor is animal. Before human is going to predict this natural disaster, animals can find it. Because the frequency heard by the animal is very, very less. 0 to 16 hertz. The people can hear, the human being can hear the frequency range from 20 to 20 kilohertz. And the mammals can hear the frequency which is above 20 kilohertz. So, the frequency is playing an important role also. Amplitude is the very, very important parameter. So, we have to increase the signal strength by using different types of amplifiers. We know about signal conditioning unit. See, this is the basic electronic recording system. Just consider the patient. Here we are measuring the potentials from different parts of the body using sensor and the measured quantity is converted into electrical signal using transducer. After that, the measured electrical quantity which is converted into required signal. So we are processing that by using signal conditioning circuit. After processing, we are recording the information using writing system. So here the signal conditioning process that is considered as amplification. So the important type of amplifier is differential amplifier. We know that the differential amplifier we need two input because it has to find the difference. So consider this is the differential amplifier. Here we are giving two inputs V1 and V2. So the first input which is passing to the inverting terminal and the second input is given to the non-inverting terminal. Now we are measuring the output voltage at the output terminal. So this device is used to amplify the difference between the voltages which is applied to the inputs. So amplifiers are constructed using op-amp. The output voltage of the circuit measured as V out equal to R3 by R1 into V2 minus V1. That means R3 is the feedback resistor and R1 is the input resistor. Okay. Now, the difference between the two input signal is V2 minus V1. So, the difference between the two signals will be amplified. So, it is multiplied by R3 by R1. So, the difference signal will be amplified. That is the output of differential amplifier. See, just example we are taking thus. Consider this is the first input of this differential amplifier. This is the second input of the differential amplifier. Now we have to find the difference between two input signals. Okay. If you are taking VA, VB, the output will be VA minus VB. For example, we can take this is 5 volt. So this amplitude is also 5 volt. So 5 volt minus 5 volt, the output difference will be 0. Isn't it? If it is 10 volt, consider at this place the amplitude is 10 volt. Here also the amplitude is 10 volt. So 10 minus 10 answer will be 0. So the other remaining place just compare these two signals up to this the common mode signal will be rejected and while finding the difference between these two signals just we can get this peak. Am I right? So we can obtain the different signal. So VA minus VB is the sinusoidal signal. So this is the difference between the two input signal. So this signal will be multiplied by the feedback resistor divided by the Input resistance, so V it will be somewhat boosted up. That is the operation of differential amplifier. Now, the differential amplifier can be used in measuring ECG signal. 
So differential amplifier in ECG recording system is the next topic. Just to see the circuit diagram, here we are connecting differential amplifier. Here it is used to boost up the signal strength. We are connecting this amplifier in the patient. Just we are considering the right arm, left arm and right leg. Just to see the construction, here we are having two input terminals, inverting terminal and non-inverting terminal. At this non-inverting terminal, thus left leg arm potentially is connected. At this inverting terminal, the right arm signal is given. Am I right? Now here we are having three capacitors, C1, C2 and C3. These are called as coupling capacitors which are used to avoid interference. See here, so C1, C2, C3 are called as coupling capacitors. While connecting this capacitor, there is no possibility for interference. So the difference between two input signal is V0 equal to V1 minus V2. So V equal to common formula V equal to I into R. But here we are having resistance and capacitance. So commonly we can write impedance. So V equal to I into Z. So V1 equal to I1 into Z1, V2 equal to I2 into Z2. So when both the currents are equal, we can write the formula V0 equal to I1 into Z1 minus Z2 or I2 into Z1 minus Z2. So this is the output voltage of this amplifier. Now we should know what is impedance matching circuit or what is the equivalent shared circuit for the input of an ECG amplifier. Just to see this diagram, here we are having resistors and here we are having impedance Z1 and Z2. And VA, this is the voltage across this electrode and or the VB is so a voltage or potential in the electrode, second electrode. And ZI is called as impedance, input impedance we can say. And V means error signal or unwanted signal. VH is the potential which is measured from the heart. So VH is called as voltage signal which is generated by the heart. And VE is the error or unwanted signal. And ZI is the input impedance. Then Z1 and Z2 are called as skim conduct impedance of the electrodes. So while we are measuring the potential using electrode, there will be changes in the electrode impedance. So to minimize the effect of changes in the electrode impedance, we have to choose high input impedance amplifiers. If the input impedance is very very higher, then the interference or noise will be rejected. So while if uh, the input impedance is very low value, there will be a distortion in the recorded signal. So even if the CMRR of the instrument is very high, sometimes the ECG signal may be affected with some artifact. So artifact means the disturbance or noise we can say. So CMRR of the amplifier should be always higher. Sometimes it will be very high even though the ECG signal will be affected with some artifacts. For that, the problem that is input impedance unbalance, right? So if the impedance is balanced, there is no possibility for artifacts. If there is a source impedance unbalanced, it will create more artifacts. So the main point, we should increase the CMRR by increasing the input impedance. Let's see the formula. CMRR equal to ZI by 2 divided by Z2 minus Z1. So here ZI is the input impedance. So when the input impedance is increasing, automatically the common mode rejection ratio will be increasing. Another one option, we can decrease the difference between the skin contact in electro impedance. So if it is very low, automatically the CMRR value will be increasing. Just assume that if you are taking input impedance is 10 mega ohm and difference between these two con electrode impedance is 1 kilo ohm, then while we are substituting the values, we can get, so ZI equal to 10 into 10 power 6, so but divided by 2 into Z2 minus Z1 value we are substituting and we are getting the value 5000. Now the second assumption is consider Z i is 10 mega ohm and Z2 minus Z1 is 5 kilo ohm. While we are substituting these values in this above formula, we are getting the value of CMRR as 1000. So we can understand when Z2 minus Z1 is increasing, automatically the CMRR value is decreasing. We know that the CMR of the amplifier should be always higher though so that we should concentrate to decrease the difference between the electrode impedance. 
So the electrode impedance unbalanced due to the electrodes on ECG has reduced the CMRR from 5000 to 1000 only. Now the second assumption we are considering input impedance is highest value 100 mega ohm and the difference between two electrodes is 5 kilo ohm. Now when we substituting these values in this we are getting the CMRR value. So CMRR equal to 10,000. So it's the highest value. So from this you can understand why the input impedance is very very higher automatically the common mode rejection ratio is also increasing. So, the, our main target is to increase the input impedance of the amplifier. So, while having high input impedance, it is necessary to obtain high CMR. Another option, we have to uh, minimize the difference between the electrode impedance. So, what are the methods to increase input impedance? That's the next thing. So, we, what, why we have to increase the input impedance? Because we have to increase the CMR value. So, there are two methods to increase the input impedance. The first method is we can use field effect transistor in the differential stage so that input impedance can be increased. And the second method is we can use instrumentation amplifier in the pre-amplifier stage so that we can increase the input impedance and we can increase the common mode rejection ratio. So, what are the limitations of differential amplifier? Normally, differential is amplifier is having good impedance, good input impedance, even though sometimes the limited input impedance is achieved in the differential amplifier is the main drawback. The limited input impedance is the limitation of the differential amplifier and the second limitation is CMRR of the amplifier sometimes it is not exceeding 60 decibel. So that normally we are moving to instrumentation amplifier. So, instrumentation amplifier it is used in industry for measuring and controlling the physical parameters for controlling the physical condition of the industry. So, here it is used to measure temperature, humidity, pressure, everything inside the plant or industry and we can monitor continuously and we can control all the parameters. So, there will be changes in the physical conditions that must be converted into electrical quantities by using transducer. So, transducer what it will do? It will convert the measured quantity into electrical signal, then it will be amplified. So, for amplifying this, we are using this instrumentation amplifier. What are the requirements? First thing, finite, accurate and stable gain. Second one, the gain should be adjusted easily and input image should be higher, output image should be lower and high CMRR and high sleeve rate. So, common mode rejection ratio, we know that the ability of the differential amplifier to reject the common mode signal. Then, sleeve rate. What is sleeve rate? There is a changes in the output voltage with respect to time. That is called a sleeve rate. So, these are the requirements of good instrumentation amplifier. Now, see this. The instrumentation amplifier, it is also called as advanced differential amplifier, which is having very high input impedance. And this instrumentation amplifier is having very good common mode rejection ratio. Just to say this diagram. So, this is the 3 op amp based instrumentation amplifier. Here we are having 7 resistors for constructing this instrumentation amplifier. We are giving 2 inputs. Now, see the same circuit. Here, the voltage across this is called as VB. So, at this point, the voltage is called as VA. Here, it is called as, what is the name of the amplifier? Can you guess? So, this amplifier is called as non-inverting amplifier because we are giving input to the non-inverting terminal. So, this is also non-inverting amplifier we can say. Here also we are giving input to the non-inverting terminal. Again, at the second stage, we are using the amplifier that is called as differential amplifier because for the two inputs, we are applying the signal. So, it is called as non-inverting amplifier. Now, the current flow through this resistor is called as IG. This is RG. So, the current is called as IG. Okay. Now, these two resistors R5 and R6 are equal. So, we can consider this as R5. Otherwise, we can replace this as R6. Now, we know that IG equal to VB minus VA by RG. Now, the output of the differential amplifier is R2 by R1 into Difference between two inputs. So, the voltage across this is VA dash. The voltage across this point is VB dash. So, we can write V out equal to R2 by R1 into VA dash minus VB dash. 
First thing, we have to find VA dash minus VB dash and we can substitute in this equation. So, instead of finding VA dash minus VB dash, we are finding VB dash minus VA dash. So, we can write VB dash minus VA dash equal to V equal to I into R. So, I into R, R5 plus RG plus R6. So, this R6 can also be replaced as R5 already we have discussed. So, now if you are substituting R6 equal to R5, now we will get this equation. Now, you know the equation of Ig. So, just to substitute here. So, Vb dash minus Va dash equal to Vb minus Va by Rg into this term we will get. Now, we got Vb dash minus Va dash. But actually, we need Va dash minus Vb dash. So, we can find this equation. Now, just to substitute this equation in the main equation. So, we can get the final equation. So, the final answer is R2 by R1 into 1 plus 2 R5 by Rg into Va minus Vb. So, this is the actual output voltage of instrumentation amplifier. So, I hope that you have understand this uh, derivation. What are the advantages of 3 op instrumentation amplifier? The first thing, the gain of the amplifier is very high. Also, it is easily varied because we are using adjustable resistor. And the input impedance of the amplifier is very high, output impedance is very low and CMRR is also very high. So, these are the advantages of instrumentation amplifier. Now, let us move to the next type of amplifier, DRL, driven right leg. It is also called as right leg driven ECG amplifier. So, here we are having the name right leg. So, if you are considering the patient we are passing the signal to the right leg of the patient. Later we will discuss about that. So, right leg driven circuit is an electric circuit that is added to the biological signal amplifiers. So, this circuit is mainly used to reduce common mode interference. To minimize the common mode signal between the body of the patient and floating ground, we are using this right leg driven circuit. Now, see the circuit diagram. Consider the patient. Now, you can take left arm, right arm and right leg. So, at the right leg, we are connecting right, right, right leg drive circuit. See here, the right arm is connected with the resistance. The, so, the impedance is called as ZRA. And at this right leg, we are connecting the impedance. So, that is mentioned as ZRL, otherwise ZA. Similarly, we are connecting the resistor at this place LA, left arm of the patient. So, the imbalance is denoted as ZLA. Okay. Now, this right leg, see here, see the right leg, here it is connected with the right leg drive circuit. And the remaining two terminals are connected with the amplifier. Now, the difference between the signals are amplified. And this amplified output is again given to right leg drive circuit. It is used as feedback network. So, now this feedback is again passing to the right leg position. Right. Here, additionally, we are using common mode rejection amplifier. So, it is mainly used for rejecting the common mode signal and it is amplifying. So, we are measuring the amplified ECG signal by using this right leg driven ECG amplifier. Once again, we will discuss the points. So, the common mode signals after amplification in the pre-amplifier are inverted and again fed back to the right leg electrode and it is reducing the common mode voltage. And here the patient cable should be shielded to remove the common mode signals, otherwise to remove the interference. This interference sometimes it cannot be eliminated because sometimes the electrodes may be uh, moving otherwise sometimes the cable may, may be moving moving otherwise sometimes the patient or the instrument may be displaced so that there's a possibility for interference so this kind of interference can be avoided by using additional filters so this filters can be used to avoid the another different types of interference so the best option for using amplifier is isolation amplifier See, this amplifier, which is the best amplifier to avoid the leakage current or to protect the patient from leakage current or shocks. So, this amplifier is modeled as model 274 from analog devices and the patient safety current as 1.2 microamperes at 115 volt 
AC 60 Hz and offers a noise of 5 micro volts. And the CMRR of this amplifier is 115 decibel. And the frequency range is from 0.05 to 100 Hz. So this is the best type of amplifier for amplification. So up to that we have discussed about different types of amplifiers. So we have discussed today about differential amplifier and how it is useful in ECG recording. And also we have discussed about impedance matching circuit and we have discussed different limitations of differential amplifier and the next method that is instrumentation amplifier and how we can use the instrumentation amplifier and how to find the output voltage of the instrumentation amplifier. Also we have discussed about right leg driven ECG amplifier and what is the problem coming in that and so that we have to move to the next type of amplifier that is isolation amplifier. Right. So next in the video we will discuss about the isolation amplifier. Now we are at the end of the session. So today I want to share a small information other than this topic. Just to see this picture. Just guess what I am coming to say. Can you guess? Yeah you may guess the point. Try to be unique among everyone. Be unique. So you have to be unique and different and shine in your own way. Thank you for watching this video. Let us see in the next video.